Greetings, dear brothers and sisters, in the holy, mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once again, to Him and Him alone, to Messiah alone, be all the praise, honor, and glory. And today is the 30th day, right, David? Yes. Yeah, today is the 30th day of the 12th month of the year 2017. What a climactic year it has been. What a year that we are coming to the end of this year, dear brothers and sisters. And today, I'm here with our five-year-old son, David. He, once again, has an extremely urgent rapture alert, a word from our Messiah about the time, about Messiah's, about Messiah's return, about the time of his return. And most importantly, a very astonishing and comforting word about the time right this moment, what we are going through and what Messiah's action will be. About wherever in our valleys, what will Messiah do to us? How will he pull us out? How will he be helping us out? And how is that connected to his return? It's an astonishing. Actually, David has three words today to share. So dear brothers and sisters, as we come to the end of the year, every year we tend to feel like that well, one more year, it's almost the end of the year and Messiah did not come this year as well. And there is that feeling itself is opening doors to the enemy, which creates doubt, deceit, denial, and, and the negativity goes on. And we start sinking into a horrible pit. That's what the enemy is good for, dear brothers and sisters. But we don't have to. Because one year passing by is one more year closer. We are one more year closer to Messiah's return. As a matter of fact, one more month or one more day closer. At this point, this is, it is a matter of days, matter of hours. That's what Messiah is telling, dear brothers and sisters. Let us take Messiah at his word, what Jesus Christ of Nazareth is telling us. Dear brothers and sisters, it's not a matter of from the other side what Messiah is doing, that when he is coming, we don't have to worry about his coming. We have to worry about our readiness. Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 has the report cards for us. And we see if we do, our dear brothers and sisters, once again, we do encourage you to do a extensive study of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. That's the times we are living in if we are being deceived. Because we see the report card which Messiah had in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Lord of the churches, Lord of them, and these churches have a homiletic, a personal level as well. In the personal application, Lord of the churches, Lord of people who are thinking they're doing good, they may not be doing good. And that's not fear mongering, that's being aware that the enemy is always there to deceive us. Enemy has always planted seeds among believers. The church is not broken from outside, is not attacked from outside. The church is broken from inside. The church is always attacked from inside. That's how it has been in the history over centuries. That's what we see. So dear brothers and sisters, what makes us think that today the enemy won't sow the seeds of hatred, division, the seeds of deception inside the body of the church of Philadelphia? What makes us think? So dear brothers and sisters, either ways, as we once again get to the message, David has a, the astonishing word which Messiah gave David, he will share with us. And David has a short message as guided by the Spirit of God to share with us, dear brothers and sisters, once again, if the Lord leads you, please do take notes. If you have a notepad, why we keep talking about the notepad is that once again, there are a few basic things as a believer we need to stick on to. The, one of the most basic thing is the parable of the sower. There were four kinds of soil. And on those four kinds of soil, these, those are not the soil. Those are not the hearts of people which are secular people or unbelievers. Those are believers we are talking about. Those are people who go to the church every day, who hear the, the from the pulpit, the preaching every single day. But out of those four, only one grew. That's a 25% rate there itself. Here. Interested in doing the math? Let's do the math. It's 25% out of that. Out of the 100%. So dear brothers and sisters, what I'm trying, what we are trying to get at is, if we have a notepad, 
If we take notes of the scriptures and things what we are talking about as well as when we invite the presence of God. Holy Spirit will have a streamlined message for each and every one of us. We don't know what the Spirit of God will talk to you. How? He will talk to you. But we know that if you invite the Spirit of God, He will talk to you through this message. And you want to make notes of that. And you want to go back when the enemy. There will be days when you will be in valleys there when... Seeing, looking at the wall, looking at the different YouTube channels and everywhere else, we will be all through the pulpits. We might be pulled down thinking that, well, one year passed by, Jesus did not come. Now where do we stand? At that time, you don't have to swap from channels to channel, from YouTube channel to channel for comfort. You have to just look at the handprints of the Holy Spirit, the handprints of, of Messiah in your life. That, well, that was the time when Messiah spoke to me and said, yes, I am coming soon. Please don't worry. Or however the Spirit of God talks to you. And these are the crucial moments, dear brothers and sisters, we are living in. So let's today please invite the presence of God. Number one, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 14. Number two, Acts 17, 11. Please do at the right hand corner of your notepad, if you have, please do note these two scriptures. Acts 17, 11. Let's. Oh, let's receive what Messiah has to say with an open mind. What the Spirit of God has to say with an open mind. And let us, let us once again, go back and dig in the scriptures diligently, extensively to see if it is so. And if there is any more revelation through the scriptures, if the Holy Spirit reveals something more to you. Please do get back to us, dear brothers and sisters. That's why we are here together as a spiritual family in the end of the end moments. To edify, to exhort, to encourage each other. Not through our talking, not through our, our power, our might. But through the Spirit of God, through Messiah himself. So let's today just once again not take this inviting the Spirit of God as a trivial thing. Or just a routine exercise. But let's just take it once again. Let's raise the bar. Let's step out in faith. Let's invite the spirit of God. Let's today once again. Have a renewed appetite. Renewed hunger. Let's once again expect that yesterday. Through this message. What David is going to talk to us. David is going to share with us. As led by the spirit of God. God is going to talk to me. God is going to give me something new. Let's just expect. And then jump in. And let's start with the wall of prayer. Shall we, David? Yes. All right. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you have brought each one of us at this point of time that we can expect our Messiah's return any moment. What a time, what a time, what a time you have brought us, Heavenly Father. We just, we just stagger to see today, Lord, that the incredible, incredible, incredible extremes you have gone on our behalf. We just thank you, Lord, that you have given us one more day to breathe. One more day, which we take for granted, that oxygen is free. Lord, you have provided that oxygen for each one of us to breathe. Help us today, Lord, once again, to praise you, to glorify you, to thank you for no matter what our circumstances are, what our situations are, wherever our thoughts are, wherever our minds are. Lord, help us to thank you that you have given us one more year in our life. With so many warnings, one more year, so that we can once again... Purify ourselves through the spirit of indwelling Holy Spirit which you have provided us. We just thank you Lord today for all your divine providences, your divine promises, your divine protection which you have provided us today from this dangerous times in which we are living in. Lord we just stagger today as we begin to embrace the incredible extremes that you have gone on our behalf that might we might not only live but live in abundance we thank you father today that by your grace and your grace alone you have called us and not by any merit of our own we thank you father that you have allowed your son our messiah yeshua Hamashiach, to purchase our liberty from the law to purchase our redemption our access to you through his precious blood. By giving him to butchery. By giving Messiah to butchery. He was slaughtered in front of your eyes. So that me. The believers. Can have access to you. We just thank you Lord. Father we thank you for the Holy Spirit. The Ruach HaKodesh. That he is so diligent. To open the scriptures to the diligent. I pray Father today once again. That you would please increase in each one of us. In our fellow brethren, in our dear brothers and sisters, 
a new appetite, a renewed hunger, Lord, for you and your word. That we each may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord. And also, Father, help us at this time to be more discerning, more perceptive to what you precisely have for each one of us in the days that remain. We thrill, Father, today as we discover in your word the exciting demonstrations of your precision and your love. And yet, Father, as we behold the horizon and we sense the urgency of the perilous times we are living in, we do seek discernment, Father, that we might know what it is you would have each one of us do. For we do understand, Father, that opportunity is not mandate. That you have called each one of us to a specific task. Oh, Father, today I pray that you would, through your Holy Spirit, please make that evidently clear to each one of us, to our dear fellow brethren, that in the days that remain, so that we might each be more fruitful stewards, more faithful stewards of the opportunities you are presenting each one of us. Father, at this time, once again, I bring David in your presence. I bring myself in your presence and pray, Lord, as David is about to convey your message to your appointed people. Please be his strength. Please be my strength in our weaknesses. We claim on Psalms chapter 141 verse 3 and pray, Father, that please do set a guard over our mouths and keep watch over the door of our lips as David conveys your message to your appointed people. And right this moment, in the name of our King, Yeshua HaMashiach, using our authority of Luke 10, 19, we bind every single evil of the enemy which is coming at this time, which is coming at this video, and which is coming at our dear brothers and sisters, at our dear fellow brethren, and we pray for the hedge of protection for each one of us. And Father, once again, we pray that may this message reach to your appointed people to accomplish your mighty will. So please do enlighten all of our hearts and minds through your Holy Spirit and help us to receive this message from our coming King, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in whose holy, mighty name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. All right. So today, dear brothers and sisters, David has three words which the Lord wants him to share. And it was at three different times, of course. And I believe the first one was on the seventh day of the twelfth month of this, of course, this year, 2017. And it was during the bedtime. It's the seventh day of the twelfth month of the year, 2017. And David heard the Lord say, and if you would please read for us, David. When you are afraid, I will encourage you. When you are weak, I will strengthen you. When you are tired, I will give you rest. When you are sad, I will make you happy. When you cry, I will make you laugh. When you are scared, I will give you comfort. When you grow weary, I will make you strong. When you work hard, I will work harder. When you feel bad, I will make you feel good. When you are tired, I will make you strong. When you grow weary of waiting on me, I will come soon because I am coming very soon. Thank you. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. And uh, would you please like to read that once more for us, David? It was the seventh, twelfth, seventh day of the twelfth month of the year 2017 and... David heard during the bedtime, David heard the Lord say, When you are afraid, I will encourage you. When you are awake, I will strengthen you. When you are tired, I will give you rest. When you are sad, I will make you happy. When you cry, I will make you laugh. When you are scared, I will give you comfort. When you grow weary, I will make you strong. When you work hard, I will work harder. When you feel bad, I will make you feel good. When you are tired, I will make you strong. When you grow weary of waiting on me, I will come soon because I am coming very soon. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, David, for sharing the first word. Dear brothers and sisters, 
I just wanted to read David to read it twice to understand the comfort Messiah is providing us. Let's today just dwell in the secret place of the Most High to receive that comfort. And the second word David will share with us today, he got on the 23rd day of the 12th month of year 2017. And this was during lunch. David heard the Lord say, My son, I am with you. I am coming for my birth. Actually, my son, I am with you. I am always with you. I am coming for my bride. Trust in me. I am coming very soon. Please be ready. I am coming very soon. Praise God. And the third word, the last word today David has, he got it on the day before yesterday. I guess it's the 28th day of the 12th month, the year 2017. During bedtime, David heard the Lord say, My son. I am with you. I am coming for my bride. I am coming very soon. Please be in my presence. I am coming for my bride. I am coming very soon. I will always be with you. I am coming for my bride. I am coming very soon. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And those were the three words which the Lord let David to share today which Messiah had gave David and dear brothers and sisters once again the times Messiah is telling that he is coming for his bride he is coming very very soon and while this wait Messiah knows that we are tired we are weary so the first word which David was sharing with us today Messiah is telling us that he will provide all the comfort which is necessary while this wait Dear brothers and sisters, let us not take unnecessary responsibilities which Messiah has not intended for us to do during this waiting time. Getting into all this different kind of cracking rapture dates will make us more weary and those are responsibilities which the Bible has outlined that clearly laid out that we are not supposed to take those responsibilities because it will lead us to make us more weary and tired. So today let us dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And today, as a matter of fact, David has a short message for us. So you can go ahead, David, if you would please share with us. Isaiah 41 10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. And I be. But do we suddenly get into fear? Of course, the enemy attacks us with fear, but we should not give in to that fear. But if we give in to that fear, the enemy will and will scare us. And the Bible says in Romans 8 31, If God is for us, who can be against us? Jesus Christ is on your side, so don't be afraid. So then how, to, how not to be afraid? By not giving in to the enemy. By not giving in to the enemy. The enemy first makes us worry. And then through the worry, the enemy will slowly generate fear in our minds. The enemy will slowly generate fear in our minds. So Jesus gave two examples in Matthew 6 about being worried. First, is the birds of the air. And second, is the flowers of the field. Jesus Christ says in Matthew 6, 26, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither... Toil, for they neither reap nor sow nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Furthermore, Jesus Christ says in 
and Matthew 6 28. Consider the lilies on the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. So God is telling us that he will always take care of us. He will always take care of us. He will always take care of us. Every time. No matter what. Because Jesus always knows what we need. Jesus always knows what we need. And he always gives us the best thing. But the enemy tries to distract us with so many different things. But Jesus Christ is telling us not to give in the enemy. Not to give in to the world. And not to give in to all this flesh. It's flesh. Not to give in to the flesh. And then how do we do that? Jesus Christ gives us the answer. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added to you. So today, are you seeking the kingdom of heaven first? Are you? Are you? Are you seeking in righteousness first? Are you? Jesus Christ also says in, in Luke 6, 20 and 21. Finally, blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. And actually Jesus is talking about being poor in spirit. So I need to confess every day that we are poor in spirit. Jesus also says, Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be filled. Jesus Christ is talking about having the hunger, having the hunger for Jesus' righteousness, which is wanting Jesus' righteousness. To be righteous. And Jesus further says, Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Jesus Christ is talking about weeping for our sins. So every day we need to weep for our sins. Every day we need to weep for our sins. To weep for our sins every day. And yes, Jesus Christ is coming very, very soon for his bride. And he is telling us today in his word. But while we wait, Jesus Christ is telling us to do five things. He's commanding us to do five things. Number one, seek his kingdom first. 
Number two, seek his righteousness first. It's not that, his righteousness first. Number three, so every day we need to confess to the Lord that we are poor in spirit. Number four, so every day we need to hunger for righteousness. As I said. And so every day, number five, I'm doing now. So every day, we need to weep for our sins. So let us keep doing those five things every day without fail, without failing. And Jesus Christ says that he is coming very, very soon for his bride. As I end today, let the Spirit and Bride say, Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come! And come to him today, come to Jesus today. Tomorrow might be too late. And, and, and let us get ready for his return. And thank you everybody. And may the Lord bless you all abundantly for listening to me. Thank you everybody for listening to me. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you so much, David, once again for sharing the words and especially reminding us that while we wait here, dear brothers and sisters, once again, we are to occupy. We have a job. If we claim that we are saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, great, what are we doing with our being saved? We all are called for being a part of the Great Commission. Number one, number two, we all have specific talents. Matthew chapter 25, we all read and stop in the first 14 verses of Matthew chapter 25. Just getting excited and knowing about the wise and foolish virgins as Anna was telling the other day. That the next thing it talks about is about the talents. God has given each one of us talents or responsibility. And we are here to multiply that not with our power or might or intellect but with his spirit. So the question is, dear brothers and sisters, as David was reminding us today, that while we wait, we have a job to do here. Messiah is telling us every minute that he is coming, be ready. When he is telling us, be ready, then we need to, every single day, revisit. Revisit our spiritual inventory. We, every single day, have to go and confess to the Lord that we are spiritually bankrupt. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. That's what David was telling us today. For the kingdom of God is theirs. Dear brothers and sisters, it's astonishing that we keep looking for blessings of God, but God has pronounced so many blessings. Just in the Sermon of Mount itself, Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7. There, is, there are so many blessings explicitly pronounced. Today is the day to revisit those chapters. Today is the day to go and take a look and claim on those blessings which the enemy is trying to rob us in these end of the end moments, dear brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, there is a special blessing pronounced on his bride who is waiting and which is, and that's just not my saying or my conjecture. That's, let's take a look at today, Luke chapter, chapter 12, I believe, is the parable for the watchfulness. There are two parables. It's, Luke chapter 12 verses 35 through 40 is the first parable about the watchfulness where Messiah himself is talking. And let's, let's, let's read this together. As we read this together, dear brothers and sisters, let, today we'll read that. Let the Spirit of God talk to each one of us. Walk through that parable Messiah is trying to talk to us. And we will leave you with a set of questions to reevaluate your spiritual inventory. That where do you stand today? As we are at the brink of rapture, where do I stand today? Because there is 
an inheritance. There is there are rewards for obedience. There are rewards for faithfulness, dear brothers and sisters. When Messiah said that, no one knoweth when the Son of Man co coming. So please be watching. He meant it, because if there are. Everything is laid out. We know when he is coming and every single thing. That is a direct obstruction to our faith. Because faith is 0% evidence and 100% hope. So Messiah won't contradict himself in the Bible. One, He says, he defines faith in Hebrews 11. One. In Hebrews 11, 6 he says, without faith it is impossible to please God. And then he also says that there is... That we need to be watchful every single day. So these three connect together, dear brothers and sisters. All the signs and wonders once again are good things to bring us to the Lord. And then like being the sons of Issachar, then be the Berean. And that should generate in 1 John 3, 1 John chapter 1 verse 3. To a fellowship. That's what we are. So let's just revisit the parable of watchfulness in Luke chapter 12 verses 35 through 40 and please do invite once again the Spirit of God to guide you whatever the Holy Spirit has to give the message personally streamlined to you let the Holy Spirit talk to you at this moment and as once again we'll leave you with a set of questions to reevaluate your spiritual inventory dear brothers and sisters and we will do that together as a matter of fact so we will be using our New King James version. It's Luke chapter 12 verses 35 through 40. You are, please do, we welcome you to follow along or you can have your own Bible. However you are comfortable. Please do invite the Spirit of God though to guide you. So Luke chapter 12 verse 35, verses 35 through 40. The faithful servant and the evil servant. Let your way, waste be girded and your lamps burning. That's a command. That's an imperative, dear brothers and sisters. Let's let your waist be girded and your lambs burning. And that we can always extrapolate or correlate a side-by-side -side study of Ephesians 6. The girdle of truth girded. Waist girded how? Those are questions we need to ask which we won't be able to go through exegesis today of this Scripture what we are reading due to the interest of time, but we we'll let the Spirit of God talk to you. Be precise. The precision is the key, dear brothers and sisters, in these end moments. So let your ways be girded and your lambs burning. And yourselves be like men who wait for their master when he will return from the wedding. That when he comes and knocks, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. The brothers and sisters, this was is explicitly pronouncing Messiah, Jesus himself, Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself. Yeshua HaMashiach is pronouncing a blessing on each one of us. But at the same time, the enemy has creeped in. And this verse has become one of the most, if not the most, one of a very... Uh, which has been abused to a greater extent. And we just will let you as, as the Spirit of God, how? The Messiah says, blessed are those servants whom the Master, when he comes, will find watching. So it's a blessing when we are watching. But how do we watch? We keep on talking, dear brothers and sisters. You can keep going to our previous videos as the Lord leads us to Forana for... For David, for our eight-year-old daughter Anna, for our five-year-old son David, or as the Lord leads me. We keep talking about how to watch as the Messiah leads us to share. We will be blessed for this watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. Dear brothers and sisters, there is a reversal of roles here. The master is going to serve the servant. It should be the other way around. And why is the master going to serve the servant? It's a blessing which is being pronounced. So this, please do take this to your prayer closet. Please let the spirit of God guide you and see what God has for you through the through these scriptures, through these verses. Continuing to verse 38. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. The brothers and sisters... 
we try to once again equate this to a time frame. Yes, second second watch and third watch is typically from 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. is the 12 midnight, 9 p.m. to midnight will be our second watch. From midnight to 3 a.m. will be our third watch. Dear brothers and sisters, there is a if. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch. It's not he will come in the second watch or third watch, dear brothers and sisters. If that if is taken out, there is a condition put there. If, then we try, we are, on this basis, we are trying to crack the rapture date where Bible is telling it's a if there. So it's just enemies trying to steer our energy, our resources to different directions, but, but, not to come to Messiah for who he is. So continuing, and if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect, dear brothers and sisters, Matthew also makes the same remark, same thing in Matthew, Jesus, Matthew notes the same thing what Jesus spoke, Luke wrote the, is writing the same thing, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is our authority, we spoke about it earlier and in the Old Testament that anything is established by two or three witnesses, so that's where Jesus is pronouncing himself. We are denying his authority when we are trying to crack a rapture dead when Messiah is telling, therefore you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. So dear brothers and sisters, we know that we are in that time because Messiah is telling us. Today is the time we would like to leave you with few questions for this parable for the watchfulness. Five questions we have to revisit your spiritual inventory. First question. What is it like to wait for someone without knowing when the person is coming? Um, and think of hours, days, weeks, months, years. How does it feel? As a matter of fact, those feelings, you can note it down. And those feelings which are gen generating the negativities, the driving us towards our valleys. We can actually take it to the prayer closet and tell Lord, express those, whatever we have written down, Lord, I'm weary, Lord, I'm tired, Lord, I'm not able to take it, Lord, whatever the, your situation be, take it to your prayer closet. We need to trust the one who came down, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who was wounded for our transgressions, the one who was bruised for our iniquities. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 6 says, that Messiah gave his back to those who flogged him, to those who struck him. Messiah gave his face to those who spat on him. And this is the creator of heaven and earth. Can you imagine, dear brothers and sisters? Isaiah further says in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 6, the same scripture. That Messiah gave his cheek to those who plucked out his beard. Because Isaiah 15 52 verse 14 says, tells us that his visage was marred. The one who has gone through those extremes, dear brothers and sisters, does he not know what we are going through? Does he not understand what we are going through? That's why today, dear brothers and sisters, while waiting, if there is anything, if there is anything, what are those feelings, the negativities? Write it down. Please do take it to your prayer closet. Messiah will fix it for each one of us. He is the one. He is the one who gives us the strength every single day. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 through 31 should be our authority. Second question. How were the servants to be while waiting for their master? And Luke chapter 12 verses 35 through 36 gives us, tells us that. How were the servants to be while waiting for the master? Luke chapter 12 verses 35 to 36. How long did Jesus say the servants should be willing to wait for the master? Luke chapter 12 verse 38 tells us that. And how does this translate to you today? Dear brothers and sisters, these are questions. A good way to understand the parable is to ask yourself questions and see what are the 
negative factors and positive factors which comes out of it. If there are negative factors, take it to your prayer closet. We need to rebuke them in the name of Messiah. We need to stand on the authority of Luke 10, 19. These are the negativities which are our emotions which will pull us down while we wait. We want our strength to be renewed every single day because Jesus Christ of Nazareth has given us life and life in abundance. For that he has gone so incredible extremes that we cannot even imagine, dear brothers and sisters. It's beyond our imagination to understand that Messiah is just not the cross. Psalm 69 tells us about his childhood. He became a byword. Isaiah 53 tells us he was a man of sorrows. Can you imagine the creator of heaven and earth always? And who was his friend? Who was his friend? Grief was his acquaintance. Isaiah 53 tells us that. How will it feel, dear brothers and sisters, today? When we get excited that also Messiah has not given us a time or anything that I am coming or anything like that. He just tells that he is coming. We try to crack a rapture then and then we have that adrenaline rush and then we feel so sad when it doesn't come to pass. Dear brothers and sisters, that same feeling, that sadness, a zillion, a trillion and infinity times every single day for Messiah from his childhood till the day he was crucified. Now let us talk how it was. And Paul says we need to Im imitate our master. Your brothers and sisters, it's not always easy to follow Jesus. And we all go through that. We all do understand that, dear brothers and sisters. But one day it's all going to be worth it, dear brothers and sisters. It's all going to be worth it. The enemy cannot, the enemy cannot destroy us. The enemy cannot because Jesus Christ has paid the price in full. Question number three. What happened to the servants who were watching properly? Luke chapter 12 verse 37. And dear brothers and sisters, please do a thorough study of watching. Perhaps the great place to start is just see about watching how the Bible in what places. Use the Strong's Concordance. Use your software, Bible Gateway, whatever you're using, dear brothers and sisters. Just do a World study of watching in Greek, in Hebrew, as well as in English. Just do a world study and see where do you end up. What does the scripture say about watching rather than my view or anybody's view? And dear brothers and sisters, we are not here to sell our views. We are here definitely to share what Messiah is putting on our hearts so that we all can get back in the scripture. Because Messiah, as we were telling, is putting on our hearts on this channel for each one of us, for me and my family that the bride should be turned to be virian through the spirit of God. Bride to be turned to be virian. And active watching always involves. Watching is not a passive activity. Of course not. And active watching always will involve. To have the attributes of a virian. Of being a virian. Acts 17.11. If, if you are on shaky ground about virian. Please do revisit Acts 17.11. And. Then try and understand what the Berians did. There were two attributes which we all need to have. That's how we are watching. That's not a passive activity. That's an active activity. Question number four. For what are we to be watchful? What does watchfulness involve? Why is watchfulness not a passive activity? And what are the three main messages of this parable which Messiah is trying to tell us today? Your brothers and sisters, it will be definitely worthwhile spending about 20 minutes to half an hour with these questions. Be Get alone with, please do get alone with God. Read this parable. Let the Spirit of God guide you in this. These are only what, past Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 40. These are only few verses, dear brothers and sisters. It might be worthwhile. Maybe the Spirit of God is today calling you. Get alone with God, talk to him, and once you do that, let the parable talk to you, whatever Messiah is trying to say. And after that, revisit your spiritual inventory with these questions. It might be well worth it. I don't know, dear brothers and sisters, we don't know. But the Spirit of God, Messiah knows, and that's what is important here. I have not figured it all. None of us did, as a matter of fact. None of us will ever crack the rapture date. Because Messiah said so. 
last two, over 200 years, it has never happened and it will not. And that's not a discouragement. That's an encouragement that we don't want to take responsibilities which God has not given us. God has given us some talents. God has given us, let us multiply those through his spirit. Let us be a part of his great commission. The world is watching at us. The secular world is always ready to point fingers at believers thinking that we are always doing crazy things. Dear brothers and sisters, our ambassadorship is very, very crucial. How we are representing Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one who gave it all he had on Calvary. How today am I representing? How are we representing him today to the secular world? Is he the king of kings, the Lord of lords? That's what am I portraying to the world? That's what is a question, dear brothers and sisters. Today, to the, moving to our last question. For the parable Luke chapter 12 verses 35 through 40. What responsibilities or duties might God demand of you? What can you do for God in your area of responsibility? So dear brothers and sisters. I was thinking that we could do the other parable which continues. From verses 42 through 48 perhaps. Due to the constraint of time we won't be able to. But we encourage you if the Lord leads you. Please do continue with the. Other parable as well, but if not, please do read this parable about being watchful. Let this be alone. Let Get alone with God. Plugged out of all circumstances. Plugged out of your cell phone, of your situations, your circumstances. Just the Bible, you and your tutor. And who is it? The Spirit of God, Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide always. Not any one of us. Not mere human. Because this is the divine message put together. Everything is maybe there are 40 different authors written over 1600 different 1600 years, 66 different books. But there is only one divine author, the spirit of God. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16 is our authority. It is God breathed, literally God breathed. And we can go and look at the macro codes and everything to prove that it is. But we are not going to get into that discussion, dear brothers and sisters. So please let the Spirit of God guide you. Let Luke chapter 12 verses 35 through 40. Take it to the Lord. Read it and let the Spirit of God guide you. And share on share in the comment section. in Your input, your thoughts. Let us read together. Let us reason together as Isaiah says. As Proverbs says, iron sharpens iron. Let us talk about this parable. Let us learn more. Let us learn what the Spirit of God is telling you. Let's dig into some scriptures. Let's once again be on fire for the Lord. Let's have our, let's pray for a renewed hunger, a renewed appetite for God, for Messiah, with whom we are supposed to spend the rest of our eternity together. Today is the day, dear brothers and sisters. Today is the day. Let's. This year has passed by, which means that we are one more year closer to meet Messiah. Any moment Messiah is coming as David's word, Messiah is telling that he is coming any moment. And during this waiting time, which we are being weary, the first word, which was Messiah gave on the seventh day of the twelfth month of this month of this year, 2017. It's an astonishing word. Messiah says that whatever emotions we are going with. When we are afraid, Messiah knows he will do. When we are weak, when we are tired, when we are sad, when we cry, Messiah will do what? He will encourage us. He will strengthen us. He will give us rest. He will make us happy. He will fill us with the joy because in his presence only there is fullness of joy. Psalm 1611 is our authority. So dear brothers and sisters, today once again, we do encourage you. We do encourage you. Please do revisit this parable. Luke chapter 12 verses 35 through 40. Let's. Let the Spirit of God guide you. Let's get back to us with what the Lord lays on your heart. Let's talk about, let's discuss together. Let's dig in the scriptures deeper. Let's raise the bar in these end of the end of the end moments. So that when our Heavenly Father looks down on each one of us, so that our lives so shine, so shine, so shine, that our Heavenly Father is well pleased with us. And on that day, when Messiah calls you and me, come up hither, when he receives you and me, so that he can embrace each one of us and tell us, well done, well done, my good and faithful servant, well done. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again for viewing us, for listening to us. We hope that these words and this message as led by the Spirit of God encourages each one of us and helps us to keep up the faith, fight this good fight and finish this race strong. 
And let's end with the word of prayer. Shall we, David? Yes. You can go ahead, please. Lord Jesus, I'm skinny, bring our souls in your presence, Lord. And I pray for the people who are watching us, Lord. Bless them, Lord, and help them to be in your and only you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, and God bless you all.